Well, we're gonna check out uh furry freaks, the internet's most notorious furry <laughs> <laughs> by wavy wub surf man. Furries are people too, like nematodes. They're people too. So yeah, we're gonna check out some infamous uh furry action. Shout out One to those who are you know in, <laughs> into the 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 furry uh, lifestyle. You know. You said shout out to them. Yeah, man. Oh, shout okay. out to them. Gotcha. No. No. See, look, somebody Where? says Snake Island. Yeah, don't go there. <laughs> Nuke it. Kill them Island. all. Yeah. Let's so, look. <laughs> so you into look, like man. furries as well, or are you? No, I'm just trying to be inclusive to everyone because everyone matters. Yeah, you're the wow, Ross. Wow. Everyone does matter. Well, you know that, even if you're it's... a furry, bro. <laughs> you all matter. I don't even know what a furry is, but. People that dress up, you know what furries are. People who well, are. You know what furries are. No, people who dress up. People dress up in fucking animal suits. I don't know what furries are, bro. I never, never <laughs> heard know. of a furry. For real? Yeah. This is your first time hearing of a Well, that's what it's called. You remember that video we was watching of the dude that like to dress up like a dog? Yeah, yeah. You would he's like a, a, a you would consider him a tier of a furry. Like people oh, that just geez. like to <laughs> There's levels to up. this shit. Damn. Levels. All right, we're going to check this out, man. <laughs> Notorious subcultures on the internet is that of the furry community. <laughs> Furries have been around for decades. Oh. Their bizarre activities, artwork, and conventions Still being a source of comedy, bewilderment, and disgust for millions of online gawkers. And while most involved in the furry community are simply fun seekers with a shared interest in animal alter egos, the community does have a dark side. From furries committing bestiality to oh. revenge killings to life threatening gas attacks. Whoa. These are the world's most dangerous furries. Hey, Is that yo! real? I want to give a big thanks to Warby Parker for sponsoring today's video. Warby Parker is committed to providing Damn. exceptional vision care. You know what kind of glasses those look like? I ain't going to say it. Go ahead. They definitely don't look like. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even say anyone. Like? <laughs> Furfest gas attack. Oh, brother. They got like the, uh, the smart Cartier. Our first story involves a bioterrorism attack <laughs> that occurred bro. at a furry convention back in 2014. They got the Harry Potter when joints. When furries were awoken from <laughs> their sleep by a foul odor that was permeating the convention <laughs> the center Potter hotel, joint. police were notified and a criminal investigation soon year. followed. This is the story of the Damn. Fur Fest gas attack. To begin this story, let's go back to December 5th of 2014. The location, Rosemont, Illinois. The venue, Hyatt Regency Hotel near O'Hare Airport. Like and the event was Midwest Fur Fest 2014. <laughs> Whoa. That was likely one of the largest. Ah, Midwest Fur Fest. They let's had a get whole it. fur conference. Midwest Fur Fest. Let's go. Fur con. So they call it furry con. Gatherings of furries in United States history, Fur Fest 14 could be described as a religious experience for those in the furry Ross fandom. Picked this video the venue marvelous. was flush with plush, with each patron donning their custom-made fur Look suits and commiserating with their cartoonish companions. The furries listened to panels, bought and sold art, and met friends that they had been communicating with online for years. This is a big deal for a lot of furries out there. The fun would go on for nearly three days, but unfortunately, on the final day of Midwest Fur Fest 2014, a criminal element would. Can we just acknowledge the name Midwest Fur Fest? <laughs> <laughs> His bars to it, too, dog. Oh Damn. my God, bro. People travel all around the world to meet up in their furry costumes and have a great time. This shit can't be real, bro. No, this is this is clearly a, a thing, bro. Enter the picture <laughs> that threatened dying, the entire convention. It was the early morning hours of December 7th, the final day of Fur Fest. Most furries were tucked in bed by this point, with only a few lone wolves awake still burning the midnight oil. One furry is returning to their hotel room on the ninth floor after going out for a smoke. Oh, but after stepping out of the ninth floor elevator, they're almost immediately hit in the face with a pungent odor that causes their nose nose to burn and their eyes to water and oh, steam shit. and other furries that were sleeping would be awakened by this sudden atmospheric disturbance moments later hotel alarms began sounding and the confused furries now began to panic as a result of this mysterious miasma the entire building was being evacuated this is a quote taken by a fur fest attendee regarding the smell 
quote, it smelled for all the world like the worst pool shock you've ever been around. Like it was eye stingingly bad, oh, even damn. outside of the hotel. As That's attendees crazy. exited the convention center hotel, they found that police and news reporters were already on the oh. scene. The situation turned oh, out damn. to be a Wait matter of national attention and was being treated as an active bioterrorist oh, attack. Shit. Many furries that had been evacuated were being treated for exposure to the unidentified oh. vapor. Most were lucky, only experiencing minor irritation to the eyes, but others weren't so fortunate. Oh, no. In fact, a total of 19 Furfest attendees were sent to the hospital due oh. to health complications related Damn. to this apparent gas That's attack. Fucked up. Once all the furries had been herded from the hotel, police would storm the building, looking for the source of this noxious odor. And after performing a cursory search, they would find that source. It was a glass bottle that had been filled with poisonous chlorine powder. Oh. Someone had intentionally shattered this chlorine container just wow. outside of the ninth hotel. trying to get rid of all the damn exit, furs, Causing bro. dangerous chlorine gas to fill various areas of That's the hotel. Crazy. First responders reported that the average gas measured resulted in 1.4 parts per million. According to the National Library of Medicine, one to three parts per million results in mild mucous membrane irritation that can usually be tolerated for about an hour. However, it's thought that the chlorine concentration could have been even higher in areas closer to the chlorine source on the oh. ninth floor. Law enforcement considered this act intentional and would open a criminal investigation yeah. into the matter yeah, and started searching that's for potential terrible. suspects. Meanwhile, during the chaos, the evacuated furries came together and supported each other in this time of stress. One furry attendee even reportedly went to a nearby McDonald's and got McMuffins for the evacuated furries. Right, when the going weird. got tough, the herd of furries came together. At approximately 4.30 a.m., chlorine levels would reach zero and guests were permitted to return to their hotel rooms. With things returning to normal, the last day of Fur Fest would actually be permitted to occur and it went on without a hitch. So if the Fur just... Fest terrorist intention was to ruin the final day of the event, they failed miserably. And in regard to the furries that needed medical we'll make them attention, mad. thankfully, 18 of the 19 that were sent to the hospital had been released the next day. In regard to Furfest, all went well for the most part. The only confounding variable to this story, though, is the mysterious identity of the perpetrator. The identity of the Furfest gas attacker is still unknown to this day. Even after a thorough law enforcement investigation, the chlorine contaminator was never found. Goddamn, With police bro. not being able to identify the culprit, this is naturally Bastard. led to a lot of speculation For online real. in regard to the matter. Gumbag. With there being many theories floating around postulating who could have done it. Looks like many a Bucky have pointed Chucky to Cheese a handful of prominent trolls within the furry <laughs> community as being likely <laughs> responsible for the gas attack. That's Their prime Trina. suspect, who I'll keep nameless, had oh. allegedly brought a firearm to a prior furry convention. And Why, some community bro? members have alleged that this man once claimed responsibility for the attack itself. But even if that's true, these are only circumstantial leads. No real direct evidence has ever surfaced connecting this person to the biohazard contamination. And in all reality, Appreciate it's very the, uh, likely that any troll claiming responsibility for the crime had Chris. nothing to do with it. And they're likely just trying Dubs to bait reactions real. from the furry community members. <laughs> Whatever the case, the Furfest gas attacker is still at large, and only time will tell if this mysterious individual faces justice That's for their crime. That's terrible, bro. They, these people just want to be furry and friendly. Here they go. Still the wolf? Oh, Our next bro. story involves a depraved member of bro, the furry the community using deviant art to lure in a 12-year-old victim. This story oh. begins with 21-year-old Mesa, Arizona man, Aaron Usury. Usury could be described as an internet-addicted loner and spent most yeah. of his days in front of a computer screen. A self-described artist and furry community member, Aaron was a regular visitor of a variety of furry fandom forums, but his favorite <laughs> website in particular yeah, was none other than DeviantArt.com. Yeah. Under his furry pseudonym, Zell the Wolf, Aaron posted to the site frequently, <laughs> sharing his furry artwork to the message board on a regular basis. Aaron's artwork was crude, derivative, and oftentimes contained sexual themes, with many of his drawings portraying his Zell character romantically involved with other deviant art furries. One oh, image in particular uh, shows Zell cuddled next to a wolf-like character that he had just bitten on the neck. The 21-year-old furry also created poems that bordered her. on melodrama, these poems indicating that the man had some sort of inner turmoil that he was going through. Time will tell. Where do I go when I just want to be okay? What do I do when nothing seems to go my way? I will sit here and wait, waiting for dot 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 dot. 
Oh, brother. brother this guy stinks. Uh, <laughs> oh, brother. Dog, what the hell is this? That clip will never cease to be fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. Especially oh, it was unexpected, bro. too. Oh, brother. This guy stinks. I don't know. What the hell he thought he was doing? Fucking cringe-ass Paul. That shit was cringe. It was cringe as hell. Which, of course, so brings us to some of the more questionable friendships that Appreciate Aaron, that a.k.a. Alchemist. Zelda Wolf, would make oh, using man. DeviantArt. In some point in September of 2014, the Zelda Wolf found right. himself becoming considerably close with two 12-year-old girls that he met on the DeviantArt website. These two minors were from Kansas and frequently spoke to Aaron online, thinking highly of the man for his artwork. Initially bonding through their shared interest in furry fandom, the relationship would expand over time. What started with text chat evolves to voice and video, with Aaron conversing back and forth with the 12-year-old girls using Whoa. Skype and Google Hangouts. Whoa. It's said that in these calls, Aaron would attempt to counsel the young girls regarding their issues with school, bullying, parents, and depression things that Aaron claimed he dealt with growing up. But let's be honest, guys. I don't think it takes much of a rocket scientist to tell where this story was going. Yeah. Zell the Wolf was grooming these 12-year-old girls. Of During course. the later stages Fucking of sicko. Aaron's interactions with the 12-year-olds, he would begin chatting explicitly, sending and receiving nude photos with the minors on a regular basis. And if what? that wasn't sickening enough, it's been reported that at one point, Aaron would send this a video of himself having sex with the family dog to the 12-year-old year olds. Yeah, Ooh. the man filmed himself committing bestiality and sent it to minors. This horrific arrangement would oh, go on for months until jail. an adult would finally get involved. Under the furry In February jail. of 2015, the disgusting relationship was terminated after one of the 12-year-old's mothers discovered the repugnant chat logs and videos. The mother would contact the police and a criminal investigation was open against Aaron Usury. On April 11th of 2015, Aaron's home was raided and the police would discover messages oh, between oh. him and the two kids. This and sick, CP was sick. present on the man's electronic. Someone said, send him to Dudley Town. Facts. Facts. Send that nigga to a first class trip to <laughs> Dudley Town. Let that nigga stay in the woods. Let him stay there, bro. Oh, they'll have a, oh, we love your kind over here. Oh, the Oz welcome, to Dudley Town. welcome to Dudley Town. Me and the demon game about to fuck you. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. Get ready to open your mouth larger than humanly possible. <laughs> <laughs> Send that nigga to Dudley Town, bro. Nah, he's sick as hell, bro. Jesus Christ. Like Aaron Usury would be taken to jail with the bond set at $25,000. Sometime later, Aaron Usury, a.k.a. Zell the Wolf, was found guilty on of charges course, ranging from bestiality to wolf. luring a minor for sexual exploitation. The man was convicted to serve 17 years in prison with no possibility of parole. Since being incarcerated, a Good. news crew has performed a jailhouse interview with the man, and this is his side of things. Yeah, I was stupid. able to help one of them through her cutting in suicide issues for a long time Just... I was making progress and then over time it became more about me and less about them and that's when I lost look at his eyes yeah it's like look, he's look not the even eyes. there bro he's just like look at, look at the eyes the eyes tell uh -uh. you everything you need to know just look at him the eyes the pimples all over the face it lets you know he's not a man to be trusted he wants some dog cat I gotta chill, bro. I gotta chill. I gotta chill. He gotta <laughs> chill. <laughs> Everything that I stood for. Everyone seems to just take into a take into their own minds that it's not possible. You can't be in love with someone. Well, you can't let them know. Hey, I know that you're on the internet a lot. I know that this is really exciting for you, but but be mindful that there are things out there that you will want to avoid and hear what some of those things are and here's why we want you to avoid them. Despite his apologetic demeanor, right. I think the furry community and the public in general will they be happy them. to know that this man is behind bars for over 10 more years. Good. Stay his ass in there. Wolfie. 
Black Heart. An online community that's closely related to the furries is that of the Wolfkin. Oh, Rather than boy. role play under furry alter egos, <laughs> members of the Wolfkin community <laughs> believe themselves to actually be part wolf. And these Wolfkin individuals <laughs> form packs with other Wolfkin in their communities and also uh, participate in these Skin bizarre furry. rituals to boot. <laughs> Now, if you do that shit in the wild and some real wolves pull up. Uh, yeah, that's the y'all fucking around. Nah, stop playing with the bullshit. Go do some real go do the real shit. I hate go, you know what? Go do it. Go go be a part of a real pack and see if they don't pack your ass up. Go pack you up on her. <laughs> oh, this nigga, he brought us uh, meals to go. Nigga. The food comes straight to us. Meals on heels. Meals on heels. <laughs> Oh. Arguably the most infamous Wolfkin community member in internet history Make is Wolfie Blackheart. This oh teen boy. werewolf rose to infamy after the My life in two pieces. Uh, this is my last da, 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 No breathing. Da, Don't give a fuck. Man. Come on, I'm bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> that was so racist. <laughs> oh, man, bro. Internet discovered she had allegedly decapitated a dog and boiled down its head. What? Believing the girl to be a degenerate dog killer, 4chan would launch a campaign to get the girl Whoa. locked up. This is the story of Wolfie Blackheart. Our story begins in early 2010 in San Antonio, quick. Texas. Around this time, a group and of teenagers Texas. and young adults involved in the Wolfkin subculture no. had banded together to form the Crimson Blood Wolf Pack. This Wolf Pack... <laughs> Say brew. What's bracken brew? Some Bockley bit bookies. Damn. The crimson brew. What's bracken brew? They oh my god. They bracken I served as a friend. What's going down, sir? Dance a lot, man. It's really more good, than a friend homie? group. These people considered themselves family, a clan of wolves. And I had a 40? pack of wolves, there has to be an oh, alpha oh, oh, dog in the it, alpha dog band together to form the, the Crimson picture. Blood Wolf Pack. This wolf Crimson pack served blood. as a friend group with a twist. Look at I mean, the it, It's really more than a friend group. These Not people considered one. themselves family, a clan of wolves. Whoa, and as with hell? any pack of wolves, there has to be an Roof, alpha bro. dog. And the alpha dog of the Crimson Blood Wolf Pack was a girl named Wolfie Blackheart. Very much immersed into lichen mythology, old social media photos from the time allow a glimpse into Wolfie's interests. One finds a bounty of photos taken of Wolfie she featuring got the red dogs, flag. a room lined with animal skulls that she apparently taxidermied herself, and an overall gothic-inspired aesthetic forming the bedrock of Wolfie's identity. Wolfie also claims to have an allergy oh, to brother. silver, which is known in werewolf lore to be a toxic. She has an allergy to silver. Bro. Yeah, I see what they did there. God damn He's it. She's real. This bro. is this we need Sam and Dean on the case. They'll take care of her, no problem. If you Dean. know, you know. Let's... The brothers. Sam. Saving people, hunting things. The family. This is some it. Twilight shit, man. Toxic metal that kills them. <laughs> like a lot of people would say, oh, you're allergic to silver. I personally am allergic to silver and nickel, but not all werewolves are. Like, it's an individualistic thing. Like, someone can be allergic to flowers, you know? In Wolfie's heyday back in 2010, there was a bit of a local obsession with the girl. The girl was not only charismatic, but she had a mischievous streak about her, adding to the mystique that would come to make Wolfie an that enigmatic mama figure down in the back. San Antonio Wolfkin. She was also once arrested on a burglary charge. I was proven not guilty because I didn't do it. I was in the woods nearby, which I'm always in the woods. And uh, they caught me and my friend in the woods. We didn't do the break-in. But in January of 2010, a shocking development that was, was surfaced little, that suggested sort of. that perhaps Wolfie wasn't this innocuous Wolfkin influencer yeah, that most bro. people thought she was. Carry your my the way month, was, the photo would surface hey, on you know, you know. showing an outstretched arm holding a decapitated dog's head. The photo immediately cultured outrage on the boards hey, and prompted swift investigation into Peter, the origin that, circumstances boy. that led up to what was shown in the photo. Those familiar with the deep floor of 4chan know just 
just how seriously the community takes animal abuse, and the case of this dog head would be no exception. Members of 4chan created an IRC chat room dedicated to solving the alleged crime. In this IRC, many leads were discovered, and using EXIF image data and a deep dive on MySpace, 4chan users managed to trace the potential really source the of the photo to yeah, Wolfie Blackheart right. and a handful of friends associated with the Crimson Blood Wolf Pack. Names and phone numbers were eventually discovered, and this resulted in the 4chan community firing off a shotgun blast of calls and texts to these numbers in an attempt to get a confession for this apparent dog decapitation. This would prompt an anonymous associate of Wolfie to come forward and give an explanation, and this individual went by the name Razor or Raz. Razor would pop into the IRC chat and comment the following. Everyone shut up for a set. Sec. Raz. Okay, I R Raz. No one killed the fucking dog. A truck running through my neighborhood ran him over. I tried to save him, but he died on the way to the vet. I'm the dog's caretaker. He was astray. I took him in. I hate my friends for defiling the body. They beheaded it. Dog died in a car accident. They just messed with the body. A purported subsequent phone call with Raz okay. would reveal more that information about the situation. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, Raz claimed that the dog in question was allegedly a stray one of Wolfie's friends had picked up and had been caring for. The dog was given the name Shadow, and as mentioned in the IRC log, the cause of Shadow's death was supposedly due to him escaping his enclosure and getting hit by a vehicle. In this purported phone call, it's also alleged that Shadow was then given to some friends, unnamed in the call, to prepare for burial when it was reportedly later decided that the head would be preserved as a keepsake. And it goes without saying, considering Wolfie's penchant for animal skulls, the head was then given to her to prepare for taxidermy. Seeing this as a tangible this lead for creepy. real law this enforcement, hell. 4chan dug up Raz's real name and handed it and their speculations, along with the IRC chat logs, to San Antonio authorities Damn. and the local media. <laughs> but things start getting even weirder at this point of the story, because around really? this time, a woman named Kathy Silva, who was a nearby resident of Wolfie, she would come forward claiming that Shadow was in fact one point her dog in this dog's name was Rigsby. And mm -hmm. one day, Rigsby just mysteriously disappeared from her backyard. This has led many to speculate that the dog was perhaps stolen by one of Wolfie's friends. But this remains unproven. It's very well possible that if Rigsby really was Kathy Silva's pet, he could have just simply escaped from Son her premises and was mistaken mm -hmm. as a stray by the gang, then taken in by Wolfie's friends. Regardless, in the following days, police would do a bit of Can we all around say it? and discovered that Wolfie what? Blackheart was white people. <laughs> in the possession of several animal from skulls. The truck. And they also heard that she may have been given the body of Shadow. Naturally, Whoa. a search warrant was issued for Wolfie Blackheart's home. Police arrived and initiated a search, and inside the home they found none other than Shadow slash Rigsby's remains, oh, the whoa. decapitated head now reduced only to a skull. The raid was covered by local media. A group of people mostly online have accused her of beheading a dog. I didn't kill any animal. I wouldn't, like, like I said, I'd be more likely to hurt a human than a dog any day. And oh. even then, very, very, like, not no, no, really. No, 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 no. You said it. You said Pretty it. Pretty friendly. The dog's name was Rigsby. He went missing on January 2nd. Poor a Rigsby, photo bro. of someone holding his head that. is on the internet. He didn't, bro. Now, 18 year old Wolfie is under investigation. I didn't get him as Rigsby. My friend brought him as her dog who got hit by a car named Shadow. And was he alive at the time? Dead. Dead. He was kind of stiff. Wolfie claims she's done nothing illegal. She says there's a group of people harassing her. They've even hacked into her personal accounts online. Now you have to ask yourself, was Wolfie going to be getting in any trouble for this? If the police could determine that the gang killed the dog just for the sake of taxidermying its head, Absolutely. Right to jail. Right away. <laughs> Did the story about the dog getting hit by a car and the owner simply wanted Wolfie to preserve the skull? That's a little bit of a different situation. You know what I mean? Wolfie has gone on record several times telling her side of the story. Where are they now? Claiming that the she did indeed decapitate the dog's head, but only did so after it was dead as to taxidermy Shadow's skull for the current owner, who was apparently a fellow wolfkin as a spiritual keepsake. I had got accused of killing and beheading a dog. I did behead him, I didn't kill him. He was my friend, his name was Shadow, and uh, he got hit by a car and they brought his corpse to me and they asked me to get his skull, so I did, but the owner's girlfriend took a picture of him 
and uh, they put it online, and that's what caused all the fuss. Regardless, at the time of the raid, no creepy, animal bro. abuse charges were being filed by the state against Wolfie, but the investigation was still ongoing. She the looks whole like she wrote the dog's was quite name the controversy, the death and much oh, conversation fact. swirled online regarding it. Many believe that even if Wolfie's story was true, what she did was still reprehensible, while others thought what she did was honorable and respected mm -hmm. her choice. Despite all the public outcry, there was no solid evidence collected during the police search that suggested that Wolfie Blackheart had intentionally killed a dog. It appeared authorities believed the story about Shadow being killed by a car on the road. Shadow. Additionally, there was nothing to suggest Shadow that the decapitation of the dog yeah. was an act committed out of malice. <clears throat> While indeed disturbing and outside of the realm of anything you or I would do, the taxidermy of Shadow's skull was only done for preservation purposes, a bizarre wolfkin ritual to keep the dog close in spirit to their wolfkin owner. With all this in mind, it was ultimately decided by the state to not press charges and the investigation into Wolfie Blackheart would cease. In the wake of the controversy, Wolfie would begin to slink away from the public eye, but she wouldn't be forgotten. As after all the national the attention, force. she became a living legend amongst Wolfkin nationwide. A cursory search on YouTube will yield dozens of tribute videos wow. created by individuals participating in the subculture. These videos often take the form of slideshows featuring photos of Wolfie, the comment section full of fans idolizing I want to her. Be part, part and while there's the many out now. there that look up to Wolfie, there's an equal and opposite group that feel as if a great injustice was served in regard to this controversy. Refusing to believe Wolfie's side of the story, some to this day accuse her of being a dog killer. Many point to the allegations that Shadow was stolen from its previous owner. After all, if that was the case, the implication of the taxidermy become far more questionable if the original owner was actively looking for their lost or stolen dog. Whatever the case, this strange story does have one sort of positive takeaway, is that 4chan and the internet in general are always going to turn over every stone when it comes to these potential animal abuse cases. Oh yeah, nah. Dude. People don't rock with the animal abuse. Where's, where's Wolfie now? Whoa, the furry triple murder. When two murder. furry community members are forbidden from talking oh, it's just to a worse and worse. Yeah, that's girl, it. the men had to dastardly plot to reestablish contact with the minor, a plot that quickly turns deadly. This is the story of the furry triple murder. Oh, Our geez, story begins bro. with the Yost family from Fullerton, California. The Yost family consisted of mother Jennifer, stepfather Christopher, and their three daughters, the oldest 17-year-old Caitlin pictured here. The Yost were a happy family and active they members of the happy. furry community. 17-year-old Caitlin took her involvement in the furry fandom quite seriously and even had her own persona known as Daydreamer Fox. She would use this Fox Wolf persona online. The dad don't need the stepdad don't even look like he happy to be there. I ain't gonna hold it's, you. It's just, just taking a picture of yourself in a fox suit with your hands like this. <laughs> Something about it, bro. Uh, so, oh my. Something about can't, it. Can't make this up, bro. At IRL furry gatherings. The Yas would often participate in family-oriented furry activities, such as fur bowling events and a variety fur of bowling. furry conventions. And it would be within the furry fandom that Caitlin Yas would meet two individuals important to the narrative of this story, 25-year-old Frank Enti Felix and his oh friend, 21-year-old Josh Acosta. Both of these men were linked to the community, with Frank Felix oh, reportedly a being DJ. a regular attendee of furry cons. While the exact circumstances of how the three met are unclear, Frank, so Josh, and Caitlin would form a friendship. Frank in particular got close to the 17-year-old, so much so that furry community members often suggested that something inappropriate may have been going on behind the scenes. Oh the thought being that perhaps Caitlyn was being groomed by these older men. Uh, appreciate Caitlin's the, interaction with these two uh, men would go on for some man. time. Two but eventually walk. the relationship between Whoa, Felix here, Acosta man. and Caitlyn would come to a close shot, after Caitlyn's mother Thank Jennifer, you so much for that, bro. seeing how close her daughter had oh, gotten oh, to shit. these grown men, decided to step in, compelling the men to no longer contact the girl. But this wouldn't be the last the family would see of Frank Felix and Josh Acosta, as the two men would make a grisly return to the Yost family in the near future. In the early morning hours of September 24th of 2016, Fullerton, California 911 dispatch receives a phone call from a young girl claiming that an unknown man had broken into her home and killed her mom and dad. Oh. Turns out this caller was the six-year-old daughter of Jennifer and Christopher oh. Yost. 
Police soon arrived at the family residence only to find the Yas parents dead. Both Damn. had been fatally shot point blank while sleeping. Additionally, Damn. a visiting family friend named Arthur Boucher had also been killed during this apparent home invasion. And curiously, Caitlin was nowhere to be found. Police would open a criminal investigation into the matter and it wouldn't be long until they discovered the controversy that occurred between Caitlin, Felix, and Acosta. Should Naturally, the far. two men would become prime suspects, considering the recent falling out. The two were heavily questioned by authorities and the truth would eventually surface. Frank Felix and Josh Acosta were both linked to the killings, with Felix allegedly escorting Josh to the Yost home in a truck and Acosta entering the home and that killing the family with a shotgun. Would. Both were hit with a slew of homicide charges. Now in regard to the motive behind the killings, you might think it's pretty self-explanatory. The two guys got pissed off at the family for the parents cutting Caitlin off from them. But court proceedings would reveal the situation was far more complex. During the trial, Josh Acosta's defense made a number of disturbing accusations regarding Caitlin and the Yas family. Acosta claimed that the 17-year-old girl had convinced Felix and himself to kill her parents, accusing the family of multiple forms of child abuse. During the trial, Caitlin herself was granted immunity and would testify, alleging that she had been molested by her stepfather and confided this information in Frank Felix. And according to Caitlin, Felix would use this information as blackmail to sleep with the 17-year-old girl. However, eventually it appears that the girl no longer cared to preserve her family relationship and decided to run away from home, asking Josh Acosta and Frank Felix with help in doing so. And according to Caitlin, that's when Frank Felix and Josh Acosta come to pick her up so she can run away from home. But I guess, you know, in the moment, one of the men decide the best thing to do is to go in the house and just kill the family to get him out of the picture that's to make crazy. the situation easy for them, I guess. That's Josh Acosta's up. defense team would blame Caitlin for the killings, saying, quote, I know she is not on trial, but she is the villain and the finger that pulled the trigger that killed her parents belonged to Katie. The defense would claim that Josh Acosta was autistic and he was unable to tell people's motives and just went along with Caitlin's apparent murderous ideas. Right. Needless to say, the jury wasn't satisfied by the autistic defense. No. Whatever the case, the sexual abuse story was never verified, and even if that was the case, it doesn't justify you killing three people. Yeah. yeah. Joshua Acosta was eventually Sick, found guilty bro. of murder and was given three life sentences oh. plus another 75 Damn. years. Good. Frank Felix is yeah, still awaiting trial you. for his alleged involvement in the murder. In the time following Must this say, tragedy, three furries held memorials for the deceased family and created a GoFundMe for the two daughters of the Yas and Boucher's daughter up, as well. Bro. The Yas children were also taken That's into crazy. the custody of a family member and were given counseling after the traumatic Damn, events. Man. In what was likely one of the saddest tragedies in furry history, that was the story of the furry triple murders. Jesus Christ! The furry triple murders. The fursuit. God Our damn, what's going on with y'all? case so involving fur? two fursuit makers. Fur After crew? the couple's mental health and financial situation enter a downward spiral, they soon find themselves accused of some of the most heinous crimes imaginable. This is the story of the fursuit killers. Oh, One of the boy. most interesting elements the of the furry killers. community is the fursuits. Fursuits could be described as the physical manifestation of a furry's idealized image. The furry character they see themselves as and roleplay oh, online made into weird. a wearable costume that could be worn to <laughs> gatherings and events. Now, unsurprisingly, there's a lot that goes into making Not a fursuit. Judge. While some can be simple in design, the more Look custom suits require quite a bit of craftsmanship to pull off and admittedly look impressive when well executed. Look at and that it goes without saying that a quality dollars. suit can be costly God with God suits damn. ranging from, you know, hundreds of dollars to potentially like $10,000 mm -hmm. for a well-made suit. With prices like that, it's no surprise that some turn Wait. to budget <laughs> options when it comes to getting a fursuit. Because didn't you say something about hearing about a guy that has spent like a whole bunch of money on a suit that looked mm -hmm. like a dog? And it's like you mm -hmm. said you couldn't really tell the difference. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Damn. This is this, this is a let's see if I can find it real quick. People got expensive hobbies. Uh, that's, a, that's an expensive hobby there. Let's see if I can find the it. World's real quick. most notorious furries. Uh, oh my god. Uh, that's see. crazy, y'all. Furries are the one group of people who always got bread on them. Find it right now. Like, what do they do? I don't know. I don't know. Just save up their money. 
But there is a it's an article of a guy. I think he stayed uh in Japan or whatnot. He spent like fourteen thousand, close to fourteen thousand American dollars on a suit to look like a, a border collie. A, how do you pronounce it? A border collie. Border collie. Yeah. So it's a thing. People people into this thing. Small time indie fursuit makers are able to offer deals on suits, such as fursuit makers Vex and Jax, oh, real makers. name Jacob T. Berkovitz and Tanya R. Dillard. These two furries were well known in the furry fandom and on occasion furry would make fandom. custom fursuits for community members. Under the name Lockjaw Arts, the duo offered their services, making relatively affordable fursuits of affordable. decent quality. The two reportedly shit, made bro. dozens of suits in their time as creators. 2000. But aside from their fursuit creation, the duo was shit. also known for having a depressive social media presence. The two would frequently use Twitter to openly lament about personal struggles. Taking a brief foray through the individual's accounts, one finds many distressing posts regarding the mental health of Vex and Jax and updates regarding suicide attempts apparently made Yeesh. by these people. These personal mental health struggles would often get in the way of the duo finishing their commissions, and eventually their fursuit making business would halt entirely, with the story of Lockjaw Arts suddenly taking a bizarre criminal turn. In March of 2020, Vex and Jax reportedly posted an ad to Craigslist that led the couple oh, coming Craigslist. into contact with Las Vegas man Hector Mendez Hernandez. Yep. Reports as to what exactly this ad requested vary, but I've seen claims that it was a dating style ad, but I've also seen reports saying that it was like hailing taxi services. Whatever the case, at some point during this interaction, Vex and Jax find themselves at Hector Hernandez's home and allegedly murder the guy. According to reports, Hernandez was beaten with fists, a dumbbell, oh. stabbed, and shot. On the day of the killing, it's reported that Vex would contact a friend. And in this purported phone call, it's alleged that Vex would claim responsibility for killing and skinning a dog. When the shocked friend replied in disgust, Vex reportedly replies back with, quote, if you think that's strange, I'm sitting next to a dead body. Oh, According to this friend, Vex would then go on to explain what had happened, candidly describing the killing and how they had perpetrated it in great detail. The friend that the duo had confided in would notify police over course, the killing, right. and not long after, authorities would arrive at Hector's residence. According to reports, the couple would attempt to flee using Hector's own vehicle, but they would be caught not long after and taken into custody. The abrupt killing of Hector Hernandez by these two furries is a bit confusing at first, but after the police interrogation, the story starts to come together. In a police interrogation, Jax would claim that they were using Hector as a ride to California, but at some point claims that Hector had inappropriately touched Vex. Apparently outraged by this, Jax says he saw red and just started beating the man. So that was Jax's excuse for killing Hector. However, Vex, on the other hand, said that it was planned out. Vex uh, reportedly told police that the couple intentionally used Craigslist as a way to lure in a random victim with uh, promises of sex, only crazy. to then rob them after being invited into oh, their victim's wow. home. According to police, Vex admitted that after killing Hernandez, the couple had plans to take the man's car and live in the wilderness. Whatever the case, both were facing a slew of murder charges. While these individuals haven't been been sentenced yet it's safe to say that they'll probably be behind bars for a long time oh, yeah, it's a no, bizarre it story be. showcasing two of the most deranged minds in the furry fandom well ladies and gentlemen those were the world's most dangerous that's furries just, yeah let me know what you guys thought about this video down below in the comment section hey man that's some uh, shit there ain't it? it it went from funny to quite disturbing yeah it got worse very, after very that. quickly uh <laughs> Yeah, that's weird, bro. Uh, yeah, it. man. Uh, I don't even know what to say after that, bro. That's just. I don't either, man. That's uh. <laughs> oh, some shit there, man. Send them all to Dudley Town, bro. Send them all there. Niggas, Fuck it, bro. Trina say, can we watch something lighthearted like Love After <laughs> Lockup? I'm good, man. Yo. Love y'all, man. Keep on supporting us. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace out. This is from Houston. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.